Society. Let's now start over the very first story. The Bank of Ghana is threatening to prosecute persons that flout its laws covering importation and exportation of foreign currencies. This was captured in the public notice issued by the Central Bank today. The Bank of Ghana has recently introduced a number of measures to regulate the forex market. There's more in this report. According to a public notice from the Bank of Ghana, failure of any person to declare foreign currency exceeding $10,000 being imported or exported would also forfeit that currency. The central bank argues that enforcement would also cover any monetary instruments, including traveler's check and bearer's shares and bonds. The bank also states that transportation of currency through mails or cargo is also strictly prohibited and such cash would be confiscated and given to the state. The Bank of Ghana is drawing its powers from the Foreign Exchange Act 2006, which spells out rules governing importation of foreign exchange. Their action is also being influenced by provisions in the Anti-Money Laundering Act 2008. Analysts see the move as part of measures to enforce the foreign exchange laws, which could indirectly help deal with the city's perennial depreciation in last and first quarters of each year. However, some of their concerns is how the central bank would be able to gather required support from the relevant government agencies to enforce these laws. It is believed that flouting of these laws had contributed to the recent sharp depreciation that hit the Ghana city. Well, so Philip Namfuri has joined me in the studio now to help us understand what the Bank of Ghana is saying and uh, to what extent this, these measures will work. Good evening and welcome to Business Live. My now, love. so what exactly is the Bank of Ghana saying and what does it hope to achieve? Okay, I think the Bank of Ghana has been very busy um, since last year, October 2018, where they brought this um, notice on Forex Bureau operators. And essentially, they were saying that anytime you go to a Forex Bureau to transact, you should get a receipt and you should present your ID card mm. uh, to transact. Either you okay. are selling or you are buying foreign currency. Uh, I went to the Forex Bureau after this notice was uh, put forth. Mm. And I, I'll say the one I went to, I haven't experienced this. Then in February 2019, Bank of Ghana came up with the right, so, so that's exactly uh, the notice that the Bank of Ghana put out indicating this current measure that has been introduced. All right, so yeah. before this notice came out, there was a Ghana Interbank Forex Conduct. And all these foreign exchange regulations are in line with the Foreign Exchange Act um, together with the Anti-Money Laundering Act. Mm -hmm. So this new one that has come up, uh, you can see there is signed in 2008. So it's more or less a reinforcement was what, what was already in existence. I believe so. And I think they are just saying that um, anytime you are taking in or out $10,000 or its equivalent in any other currency, be it pound or euro. Okay. Beyond 10,000, you have to declare. If you're taking in or out. Yes, so if you are, if you are, in, if you are bringing in $10,000 mm. or its equivalent in pound or euro, okay. you must declare. Okay. Under which you are allowed to do that, from what I've read in the notice. So anytime it crosses beyond the 10,000 threshold, then you are allowed. I remember my days when I was with uh, a bank in Ghana here. You can transfer up to $10,000 mm. without any documentation. Okay. That's your bandwidth or your limit. Okay. Anytime you cross that limit of 10000 and above, then you have to provide documentation as to exactly why you are either receiving such funds or you are sending such funds. Mm. So, all, please go ahead. Yeah, ahead. So all this is to ensure that there's regulation in the foreign exchange market. Okay. And we don't have a case where our meager forex supply mm. is leaving our shores. Now, prior to these I mean, actions, we've seen or we've witnessed several other interventions like these. And to what extent do you think this particular one would yield the desired results? I think, Emmanuel, it's all about enforcement. I think Bank of Ghana just has to find a very astute way of ensuring that the black market when it comes to forex and other loopholes in the system are plucked. Because if you recollect, the president of Guta was saying that uh, when we interviewed him at the graphic stomach breakfast meeting, he was talking about the importance of black market traders or black market forex traders in our system and how I think he made an emphasis on the banks having very rigorous processes when you're accessing uh, forex or transacting in forex. Mm. So some of these things have uh, endeared people to other means of transporting cash in and out of the shores of Ghana. So with this, all Bank of Ghana has to do is to ensure that it's enforced to the letter and Without any enforcement, there is nothing really 
going to change. We can have all these fine laws, mm. policies, regulations. Okay. If there's no real enforcement, nothing will change. All right, so let's wait and see how effective this particular measure would be. Philip Danfui bringing us up, up to speed with the latest Bank of Ghana measure to regulate the forex markets. Moving on, still in the banking sector, Ecobank Ghana is leading its Anglophone West African counterparts in the Ecobank Group financial performance for the 20 for the year 2018. The Ecobank Group increased profit before tax by 51% from 288 million to $436 million as compared with the previous years. This was revealed at the bank's annual general meeting, which took place in Lome, Togo. Ebenezer Sabuti was there and has come through with this report. According to Group Chief Executive of Ecobank, Ade Ayeyemi, Anglophone West Africa's key heavyweight Ghana continues to support the growth with a rate above 5% despite the rebasing of the economy. The 31st annual general meeting, which took place at the headquarters of the bank at Lome, Togo, also provided a platform for the bank to demonstrate its commitment to promoting positive environmental and social change. Shareholders also renew the mandate of the CEO to serve for another three years as director on the board of the bank. Of course, we are one of the largest banks in Ghana and we'll continue to do everything that we can uh, to be a leader in that market. So Ghana and Anglophone West Africa is one of our best performing regions. Nigeria did perform. Uh, Nigeria is about 22% of our business today, it used to be 40%. But we want to continue to make sure that we do everything we can in terms of both technology products, but also presence in the commercial banking uh, space to ensure that we can get sufficient liquidity, we can do sufficient business uh, in, in Nigeria. The shareholders also unanimously accepted proposal by the board to transfer its profit earnings of 2018 into strengthening the growth of the bank without paying dividends. Group chairman of Ecobank Transnational, Emmanuel Ikazobo, assured that the bank will start paying dividends very soon when earnings of the group improves. I can assure you as soon as we have a solid balance sheet and we have enough capital that can carry the business forward, any excesses will be paid by way of dividends. We want to make sure that we have a solid bank. You don't, it's like if you get money today and then you spend it and then your children's school fees are due, you don't have money to pay the children's school fees. When you get money, you save so that you are able to meet all the needs, internal needs, before you start spending. So this is why every money, all the surpluses we are getting, we want to make sure we are able to meet the capital needs of all of our affiliates and then that will then prepare us for payment of dividends because with, with the capital you'll be able to generate more revenue. The group's profits after tax of $322 million is expected to boost the bank's capital as well as improving the accounts for other countries it operates in. Ibn Sabote's report for Joy Business. And back home in Ghana, rural and community banks have recorded a 13.5% increase in operating income for the 2018 financial year. The annual report of the banks released by the regulator ARB Apex Bank shows total operating income grew from 48.9 million Ghana CDs in 2017 to 56 55.5 million in 2018. The growth is in spite of serious crunch in the financial sector, which saw the collapse of seven indigenous banks during the same period. Joy News' Fred Kwame Asari attended the annual general meeting of the banks in Ho in the Volta region and now reports. The 2018 financial year is one many would want to quickly forget. As many as seven indigenous banks went down, including UT Bank, which until the crisis was a shining star in the industry. Even though the situation seems to have eased, some investors and depositors are still struggling to access their funds from some financial institutions. Where others struggled, the 144 community and rural banks showed strength. Operating income was up 13.5%. Its balance sheet grew by 20.9% and profits before tax of nearly 1 million Ghana cities was recorded. Board chairman of ARB Apex Bank, James Kwame Otieku, is even more impressed by the performance coming on the back of losses in 2016. Performance. Dear shareholders, our bank is not out of the woods yet. 
as it recovered slowly from the losses recorded in 2016, coupled with the downward trending of interest rates. And let me emphasize that over 75% of the bank's revenue is interest-related, and falling interest rates are the further knock-on effects on revenue. Despite the above conditions or the foregoing conditions, your bank managed to record improvement in most of the important financial indicators. Dividend payments will, however, be deferred to increase the stated capital of the banks to consolidate the gains. With the low capitalization of your bank and the need to increase the bank's stated capital, there is the increasing need for accumulation of profits over time as we pursue measures to attract additional capital. We therefore do not propose the payment of dividends for the year under review. The banks are already rolling out an aggressive expansion plan. More ATMs will be installed, whilst ICT infrastructure will be heavily deployed to get closer to existing and potential customers. The banks will also implement a World Bank-sponsored $8 million agency banking project as part of new strategies approved by the regulator. Kojo Mata is managing director of ARB Apex Bank. The first phase of the project is expected to sign up over a thousand agents or agency bankers, as we call them, across the country. With secure point of sale devices, customers can access myriads of banking services with, without necessarily walking into the banking halls. This project is expected to deepen rural financial inclusion and intermediation in the country. The bank spent nearly 140,000 Ghana cities on corporate social responsibility projects in the areas of education, health, and community engagement during the period. Let's now come into the capital market sector. The Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, has revoked the licenses of five fund management companies. The commission, which says the move is in line with the Securities Industry Act, is advising the general public that the companies are not mandated to carry out any fund management activities. The commission wishes to inform the general public that anyone who engages in any transaction with any of these companies or their representatives in their capacity as fund managers could be exposing themselves to avoidable risks. On the marketplace earlier this afternoon, Joy Businesses researcher Philip Danfuri explained exactly what the directive means. Yeah, it's saying that pursuant to the Securities Industry Act 2006 and Act 921, particularly Section 122, it has the powers to revoke the licenses of companies. So five companies, and I'll read a list out to you. First one, Jordan Capital Partners Limited. Second one, Equity Capital Limited. Third one, Index Analytics Limited. The fourth, DM Capital Limited. And the fifth, Oxygen Advisory Limited. Their licenses have been revoked as we displayed here. And if you do business with these companies, you do so at your own risk. So the SEC is saying that stay clear of these companies because they no longer have the mandate to carry out fund management activities. Mm -hmm. However, they haven't said anything. All they said is that these five are no longer mandated to undertake fund management activities. Now, it takes me to last two weeks when we had this discussion right here in yeah. the marketplace about the color coding of the SEC, where they have red rows for companies that have no major regulatory issues, and then uh, red rows for those that have major regulatory issues, and gold rows for those, those that don't have major regulatory issues. So if you go to the SEC's website, sec.gov.gh, you click on licensees, you click on fund managers, you see that there are about 128 companies and each has been categorized. So if there's a gold row, you see that they have no major regulatory issues. Red row, major regulatory issues, pending complaints, and one of them is voluntarily seizing operations in the country. Mm -hmm. So that's independent of this five that we have here that have had the licenses revoked by the SEC. And, and can you give us a hint of some of these companies under red, you know, okay. Kind of uh, okay, I wouldn't want to name them mm -hmm. so that it doesn't spread fear and panic. But if you go to the website, and it's, it's important to add that the website is updated regularly. So as and when any company fixes its problems, maybe a complaint, then the SEC takes you off the red row okay. into the gold. So with the gold, you have no major regulatory issues. With the red, you have major regulatory issues, complaints. At the same time, the SEC is saying that these companies that they put in red and gold, mm. this color coding, it does not mean that these companies are not safe to invest with or they are safe to invest with. 
Let's sustain the capital markets. Investor relations and general manager for Gold Coast Fund Management Limited, Benjamin Afre, has told Joy Business that the recent directive by the Securities and Exchange Commission asking them to seize collection or receipts of new funds from the investing public will impact the company's operations. His comment comes weeks after the regulator of the securities industry directed the fund management company to concentrate on paying matured investments for its clients. Here's Benjamin Afre explaining why the directive to seize collection of fresh investments will heavily impact the company's activities. There are other products the company has that has absolutely no problem. And that, those products are running. So if you say that we shouldn't collect any funds, meanwhile there's only one product that has an issue, then you leave it to interpretation. Aside that, remember we are raising funds not just locally because we are, we are working really hard to raise money. But not just locally, internationally as well. So if a regulator comes and says you cannot collect or you can't take any more funds. What, what exactly does it mean? It affects some of these efforts that we are putting in. So we are going to the regulator that they should come out and clearly clarify that position. Because the truth is it doesn't aggar well for the efforts that we are putting in to turn the situation around. But as I said, there are other products we run that has absolutely no problem at all. And those, problem, those products have been running smoothly. So that statement doesn't do us a lot of good. And so we are going back to, to let the regulator know that they should come out and clarify that statement because it, it, is, it is something that doesn't aggar well for us. As, as I have already said, as I talk to you, payments are ongoing. Payments are ongoing. And these are monies that we are getting back. So what does, what does it mean? And unfortunately, some of those statements have also you know, um, agitated even clients even more. Because, as I, like, I, like I said, it is subject to interpretation. And the kind of spin people may put on it will not be what we or even the sect themselves may be looking out for. So we are going back for them to clarify that, st that, to clarify that statement uh, that they put out there. And I'm sure we'll get that clarification as well. Let's move on to one other story we have been following this afternoon. Reports indicate that many businesses have thronged the Registrar General's Department to file their tax returns as they race to beat the April ending deadline. My colleague Ebenezer Sabuti has been to the Registrar General's Department to monitor the situation. He's joined me via phone. Ebenezer, good evening. Hi, good evening. I'm watching. All right, so what exactly can you tell us? Okay, so earlier when I came in here, there was, I mean, so many people with a very long queue inside the hall of the registrar general department, but as I speak with you, I mean, the place, uh, the staff of the registrar general staff, so, with the exception of the bank that would break for the company. So if you know the registrar general very well, the Fidel could not have a uh, deck here that they would create, which they take money for the company. They are the only deck that is operating at, at the moment, but the main registrar general's work is closed, as I speak. So what resulted in the sudden influx of these people to the department? Uh, so, you know, uh, in April, and every year April, we have to file, every business has to file their tax okay. returns and all that, renew their business registration. So some of the people here, I mean, tells me that they are here to renew their registration and also file their tax returns for the year. As to why it kept so long, um, just realizing the need for it to be found. You know, some were saying that they had a lot of things to do. Their account has audited, some uh, cross-checking needs to be done and all that. And that is how come we have this huge number turning here today. And I'm sure it will be here tomorrow as well. All right, many thanks for your time. Ebenezer Sabuti, breaching his life from the premises of the Registrar General's Department, where several businesses have thrown the department to, to beat the last-minute deadline to file their tax returns. Now, Chairman of Group Indum, Dr. Papakwisi Indum, is assuring customers of his businesses that his outfit will never ever take them for granted. Speaking at the first matriculation ceremony of the Indum School of Business and Technology, Dr. Indum assured their customers remain at the center of the business and would always be served with integrity, discipline, and loyalty. Richard Koyunyako has more.
The chairman of the Indom Group of Companies, Dr. Papa Kwesi Indom, says his numerous businesses will always put the customer first in all their decisions and actions. Speaking at the maiden matriculation ceremony for the first batch of students of the Indom School of Business and Technology, Dr. Indom assured clients of his businesses they shall continue to be the center of all decisions and actions they take. Stay awake and you will have food to spare. That's how we do it. And our principles are always centered on our clients. So the theme that we use throughout our group of companies is this, that we serve our customers with enthusiasm, innovation, and discipline. And for the company, we serve with loyalty. So whether it is the physical look of the campus, the classrooms, the lectures, whatever it is that we do here, it must be done beyond excellence. And finally, let me remind you, some of the values we hold dearly is to earn and maintain a reputation of high ethics and integrity, that we would make sound business investments, but that we would take a long view of success. And then when success comes, that we will share. We'll share the success with our employees, our community, and shareholders. That we will continue to build a culture that continually strives to go beyond excellence. The rector of the school, Reverend Professor Daniel E. Japonya, egged the students to make better use of the opportunity given them by the school to add value unto themselves. He thanked the chairman of Group Indum for his magnanimity in granting 80,000 Ghana cities for the students to study their own businesses. Industrial attachment forms an integral part of your training and has been designed to help you students relate theory to practice. You must therefore undertake these attachment programs with all the attention they deserve. 13 females, 7 males were matriculated to pursue Bachelor of Science in Banking and Finance, Bachelor of Science in Information and Communication Technology, and Information Technology for the Management of Businesses. Richard Kwejenya Akon, Joy News Elmina. It's for Business Live this evening. Many thanks for your company. My name is Imano Abwaji Riafi. For more business news, log on to myjohnline.com/business.